Hold up, did Spy Family happen in real life? Let's take a look at some of the historical influences that make up the world of Spy Family. Chances are, if you're here, you know what the hell Spy Family is, okay? But just in case you do not know, you're one of the rare few that have not experienced this masterpiece for the first time. Spy Family started out as a hugely popular manga written by Tatsuya Endo, and it was adapted into an anime by Wit Studios and Cloverworks, and it's become one of the most popular animes out there right now. It follows the story of a spy known only as Agent Twilight as he embarks on a mission known as Operation Strix. The catch of this mission, however, is that he has to make a fake family. Unbeknownst to him, the daughter he adopts for this purpose is actually a telepath that can read people's minds, and his wife is actually a highly trained assassin. This show is so good, man. I started watching it because, uh, <laughs> because... <clears throat> no, I started watching because a friend recommended it to me, and I cannot get enough of this show, man. It is so charming, funny. It has great action sequences. I love the art and the animation. And it's just so damn wholesome. I cannot get over it. I was just not expecting so many heartwarming moments in just the first few episodes. Despite its wholesome comedic nature, however, Spy Family draws on some pretty dark historical events that I just wanted to highlight real quick with this video. So let's get the obvious stuff out of the way. Let's get the obvious stuff out of the way because Spy Family in the anime from what we've seen so far takes place in the fictional country of Ostania and Ostania shares a border with a country known as Westalis and in the middle they're separated by what is known as the Iron Curtain. Gee, where have we seen that before? Uh, personally, I did not see it because I was not alive for these events but after Germany's defeat in World War II, the country and its capital city of Berlin were split up into four parts and then later two parts. West was Team USA, Britain, France, and the East was Team Soviet Union. Now, the Soviets had a big problem in East Germany, East Berlin, because they were like, what the hell? Everyone is leaving East Berlin and trying to get to West Berlin because it sucks so bad over here. We have to do something about this. I'm sorry about my Russian accent if that offends anyone. But that eventually led them to closing the border between East and West Berlin, the Berlin Wall, the Iron Curtain. Westalis and Ostania are clearly alternate versions of West and East Germany. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. It doesn't take a YouTuber. In fact, it actually says so right here on the Spy Family Wiki. It even mentions an alternate version of Hungary in this, uh, but at the bottom it clearly states Ostania was based on East Germany, the German Democratic Republic. Unlike East Germany, however, they had Berlin to themselves. For anyone who's confused that doesn't know, Berlin is the capital of Ostania. Obviously, super similar to Berlin in real life. Only one letter off. Berlin, Berlint. Also, here's a fun map I found on Reddit that overlays Westalis and Ostania on the real life map of East and West Germany, the real European map. Overall, it was super clever on Tatsuya Endo's part to make his spy comedy, spy drama, whatever you want to call it, set in this alternate version of Cold War Germany, because back then, it was all about the spies, baby. It was all about the spies. Everyone was a spy super exciting. Well, <laughs> I'm sure it was not very fun to live through this time, but it makes for great television. Westalis and Ostania seem to be locked in what's known as a Cold War. They make multiple references to this in the opening episode of Spy Family. The narrator states that there's a war of information being waged right out of sight. And then in this newspaper, on the headline, it says, Tensions, O&W, exacerbate Cold War. Literally right there, it says the words Cold War. This was the exact state of things back in the East-West German conflict. It was generally agreed upon that after World War II, nobody wanted to go to war. War was generally considered to be a huge bummer for obvious reasons. A lot of people suffered, especially in Europe, because of World War II. But the West and the Soviet Union, and by extension West and East Germany, political ideologies and goals differed so greatly that they were willing to do whatever it takes short of armed conflict to get into each other's way. And in Spy Family, the main character, Agent Twilight, he works for an intelligence agency known as WISE. And WISE is short for Westalis' Intelligence Services Eastern Focus Division. L seems a little bit long for that <laughs> acronym, but whatever, we'll take it. According to the Spy Family wiki, uh, their main goal is to maintain peace between 
Westalis and Ostania. Whether through the use of espionage, sabotage, wiretapping, and possible assassinations to keep up the peace between the nations by taking out anything that could threaten it. As observed from their headquarters, they seem to have a wide surveillance of various places. The agents of Wise and Twilight basically spy on Ostania a lot, apparently so much so that it's even worked into their logo. This is from the Spy Family Wiki as well. The logo for Wise features an eye facing east, symbolizing that they are watching the eastern country of Ostania. The real world historical equivalent of Wise would definitely be the Federal Intelligence Services, otherwise known as the BND. Now, the BND rose to prominence in West Germany during the German Cold War. And according to Wikipedia, the BND racked up its initial East-West Cold War successes by concentrating on East Germany. The BND's reach encompassed the highest political and military levels of the GDR regime. They knew the carrying capacity of every bridge, the bed count of every hospital, the length of every airfield, the width and level of maintenance of the roads that Soviet armor and infantry divisions would have to traverse in a potential attack of the West. Almost every sphere of Eastern life was known to the BND. Obviously, the Eastern-focused nature of the BND during those days, there's a lot of similarities with WISE and their current mission to infiltrate and spy on Ostania. Going back to Agent Twilight, however, uh, he is described by the narrator as being a man of a thousand faces, a master of disguise, and we see that he really does fit that description. He's not only able to replicate someone else's face and take on their identity, but he's also able to perfectly replicate their voice. He would be like the ultimate voice actor. And while I couldn't find any West German spies that matched that description, I did find something, a certain scheme that seemed right out of Lloyd Forger or Agent Twilight's playbook. I'm talking about the Romeo spy. Now, the Romeo spy, it's probably something that's been around for as long as humans have been alive, but East Germany loved this specific bit. They loved sending over their spies to West Germany with these new identities, and they would target these women who were working on important things, but they themselves were kind of low on the totem pole. They were either secretaries, translators, uh, assistants to powerful politicians, and they would send them over there with all this information on these women so they can go up to them and be like, oh my gosh, you like ballroom dancing? I love ballroom dancing too. We should totally hang out. Everything that you like to do, I like to do too. It's my favorite thing as well. And they would, of course, seduce them, and when their guard was down, they'd get the information that they needed and then ship it back to East Germany. We see this exact situation play out in episode one of Spy Family. So in the opening moments of the show, we see Twilight doing his thing, the master of disguise. He foils this guy's plan to blackmail this high-ranking Ostanian politician by revealing the fact that he wears a toupee. And yes, like I said, he uses his disguise abilities to do this, take on the identity, match the guy's voice, to trick the guy with the pictures. It's also heavily implied by the next scene that the information that he gained by dating that guy's daughter was also pretty paramount to the success of that mission. In the next scene, we see Twilight on a date with the daughter I was just talking about, and she's blabbing away, just straight blabbing away about, oh, my dad's so mad about the pictures that went missing, blah, 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 implying that she just, like, leaks and talks about sensitive information to whoever. <laughs> and then it's just a total legally blonde moment, right? She turns and she sees that a couple has just gotten engaged at the same restaurant that they're at, and she turns to Twilight, who is operating under the alias Robert at this point. She's going, Robert, when are we going to get married? When are we going to take the next step? What's going on? And then Twilight, his mission is over, so he doesn't give a damn at this point. He is, <laughs> he breaks up with her, but not only does he break up with her, he completely demoralizes her, absolutely verbally eviscerates her. I don't know why he decided to get so cold and savage with it. I don't know if he was thinking, oh, if I don't give a reason for this breakup, I'm going to look suspicious, but he breaks up with her and he's like, I'm breaking up with you because I don't sense any intelligence in your conversation. Bam, walks off. This boy does not give a damn because he's all about the mission and his mission is done. He's not trying to get into a relationship. And we also know this is not the first time that Twilight has done this. In episode eight, he literally says, I've been with countless women on my missions for the sake of my mission. Countless? 
countless bro like this dude is a spy his job is to be attentive to every detail keep track of a ton of things and he couldn't even remember how many women he's been with over the course of his career as a spy that is crazy this dude has a crazy game this dude is not even trying to pull these girls and meanwhile these other guys can't even get a call back a text back whatever my man twilight he's that dude ostania also shares another similarity with east germany in the fact that it has a lot of spy hysteria, spy paranoia, I guess is the better word for it. East Germany was constantly, constantly monitoring their citizens for any suspicious activity, whether or not they were going to try to flee into the West. They did this in a number of ways. They had an army of snitches, basically, that would report to them, and they would also wiretap people's homes, listen into phone calls, put bugs so they can listen in to conversations that would happen in people's home. It was estimated that between the police, the state employees, and all of the informants that worked with them, one in almost six and a half people were involved in mass surveillance of the citizens of East Germany. And of course, anyone who was caught doing anything suspicious, anything politically dangerous, quote unquote, they would get sent away, they would get interrogated. Sometimes they'd get sent to NKVD camps, which are not pretty. You did not want to get caught doing anything out of the ordinary in East Germany. And as dark as that sounds, we actually see something like this play out in episode two of Spy Family. Your Briar, God, I love her, I love her. She's just working her day job at City Hall, Berlin City Hall, minding her own business, doing the work, pouring some coffee, and her co-workers are, they're starting to tease her a little bit. They're saying like, you're, if you cleaned yourself up, stopped acting so weird, maybe you can get a boyfriend, talking just straight smack to Yor, which is hilarious, by the way, because they don't know that this girl could beat the hell out of them at any given moment without even breaking a sweat. The scene prior to this, we saw Yor's assassination abilities, and she wiped the floor with this whole room of dudes, just straight murdered them, straight killed these dudes without even breaking a sweat. It was easy for her. It was like a walk in the park. So it's just funny in this scene that these girls are like making fun of Yor. Well, at any point, she can kick your ass and your man's ass. And then Camilla, Camilla, oh my God, this girl is the worst, man. She can't mind her own business, first of all, which I hate. And she just cannot resist the urge to be a complete and utter bitch all the time. She makes this veiled threat to Yor, and she's like, I don't know Yor, you're in your late 20s, you're still single. Seems pretty suspicious to me. A girl who matched that description was just reported by her neighbors the other day, and she got taken away. She got scooped up by the secret police. And then we see that panel, we see that scene, and it's true. Looks like she's being taken away by these dudes in uniforms forcefully. It does not look nice. It does not look like she wants to go. And speaking of the secret police, this is actually the first glimpse, I think, that we get of them in the show. And they look super similar, eerily similar, to the Ministry of State Security in East Germany, aka the Stasi. So remember all that mass surveillance stuff I was talking about just a few seconds ago, or a few minutes ago, I guess? That was basically the Stasi. They worked under the KGB, and it was their job to basically spy on their citizens, make sure they weren't doing anything suspicious. And if they found anyone doing anything suspicious, they would bring them in, interrogate them brutally, physically, mentally, torture these people. If you ever have the chance to read through the account of Karl Heinz Richter, it is absolutely heartbreaking, some of the things that they did to the citizens of East Germany. Once Yuri Breyer is introduced in the show, he's yours younger brother, we get a lot more insight into the state security, the secret police and spy family. And we see that they use a lot of the same methods that the Stasi did in real life. They bring this guy in for an interrogation, drag him out of city hall, same sort of thing that they did with the suspicious single woman in her 20s. And they beat the hell out of him. They interrogate him. Yuri comes in and he tries a kind of good cop approach. Uh, he straight up blackmails him. He's like, yo, I've been spying on you. I have pictures of you committing treason against 
against Ostania, and then he just loses it and stuffs this guy's face into an ashtray. Kind of shows that he's secretly spicy violent like Yor is, I guess. And we also know, just like the Stasi, that the secret police and spy family rely heavily on wiretapping, bugging as well. We see after Yuri leaves Lloyd and Yor's apartment the day after, he's freaking out because he's like, oh crap, I totally forgot to bug their apartment. I can't listen in on their conversations. I totally messed up. I was just so obsessed with my sister, guys. I couldn't remember to bug their apartment, which is weird, by the way. He takes it too far. He's doing too much. He's way too obsessed with the sister. His locker that has all those pictures of your, I mean, I get it, I guess, but if it's your sister, that's a little weird, man. And some of those pictures, it is implied that it looks like that she doesn't know that she's being photographed. I'm like, whoa, what is going on here, bro? And speaking of his time at their apartment, he almost lets it slip like, Lloyd, if you do anything, I'm gonna execute you, but he stops himself. He's like, oh crap, I can't threaten execution because no one knows I'm in the secret police and I don't want to reveal that. That's all stuff that the Stasi would do in real life. Torture, interrogation, execution, anything that they can do to preserve whatever they had going on back in East Germany. And it seems that the secret police, they're willing to do many of the same things. We see Yuri saying like, I will do anything to protect this country, to protect my sister, to protect this family against political dissidents like you. Obviously super, super similar. While that covers a lot of the similarities between the world and the organizations of spy family and Cold War Germany, I couldn't find anything about little adorable pink haired orphans running around with psychic abilities during this time period. I couldn't find any assassins that matched yours description in this time period either. Trust me guys, I looked. So no, while it does not seem that spy family happened in real life, Operation Strix is not based on a true story, there are a lot of interesting parallels, inspirations between spy family and Cold War Germany. Like I said before, this show is super funny, heartwarming, charming, but the dark historical influences, this fact that it exists in an alternate version of East and West Germany, it really drives up the stakes for the viewers, I feel. Operation Strix, as silly as it is, we want it to succeed. You want peace between Westalis and Ostania because if they go to war, then all these characters that we've grown to care for and to love, they're gonna be caught up in that conflict. You don't want people to find out that Lloyd is Twilight because you know what's gonna happen to him if that happens. He'll be beaten, he'll be tortured, he'll be executed. Same sort of thing, I guess, if people found out that Yor was an assassin. Same thing with Anya. You don't want people to find out that she has telepathic abilities because who knows what the adults of this world will do to that. They'll probably use her as a weapon and take her away from the only family she has ever known, Lloyd and Yor. Anyway, I have to kind of calm myself down a bit. I'm getting a little too passionate, a little too heated, but Spy Family, it's a great show. Like I said earlier, I cannot get enough of it, and I cannot wait to see what the Forgers get into next.